What's a habit that you've kicked? I smoke from like 11 until 19. I discovered Krishna consciousness, I started chanting, and within two weeks, I completely stopped smoking. I didn't do patches or anything. Habit is something you're habituated to do, right? And it's in your habitat, so it just becomes part of your environment. And a negative habit as part of your environment is actually destructive because you don't even realise it's out of place. There's only two outcomes from lust. Either your lust is fulfilled, in which case you become greedy, or lust is not fulfilled, in which case you become frustrated. Whether it's a substance or whether it's a character trait, there has to come a point where we acknowledge that there is a tendency in the human form of life to attach ourselves or to be attached. As a kid, I wouldn't go one night without making a prayer. That's a habit I, I wish I could bring back again because it was just innocent and genuine and it had power. It took years, but when it dropped, it dropped. Before we jump into this episode, I'd love to invite you to join this Candid Spiritual Community to hear more conversations that will help you become happier, healthier, and more healed. All I want you to do is click on that subscribe button because I love your support. I love seeing all the comments pouring through, all the love pouring through, and we're just getting started. I can't wait to go on this journey with you, whether you're a spiritual seeker or you're just curious about the topic. And we really hope that our conversations will provide you food for thought and inspiration for your own spiritual journey. So join us for honest, candid discussions about spirituality for soul's sake. For soul's sake, for soul's sake. Hello and welcome to another episode of For Soul's Sake, a roundtable special with two of my best mates, Nam and Kaylee. Today we are discussing another interesting topic of spirituality based on the Bhagavad Gita, our book of choice. But I want to know, what did you have for lunch today, Nam? Oh, <laughs> lunch. Today, I had four waffles. What, How big waffles? were the waffles? Uh, waffles about that big. Quite like big. Meat, potato waffles. Size, bird's eye waffles. Uh, bird's eye. Potato waffles. Potato waffles. Savory. Yeah. yeah. Have you never had a potato waffle? Yeah, not, yeah, yeah no, I have. Not, it's not one of those Belgian massive... No, right, massive. yeah, because four of them is quite a, yeah, that's, that's a, quite a responsibility. That's a for me. responsibility as well. <laughs> <laughs> four waffles with... Um, some olive olive butter. Olive butter. I've never tried that on a waffle. Then baked beans. On oh. top of it. And then <laughs> grated, grated cheese on top. Then sprinkle of pepper. And here's the real wackaroony. Tabasco drizzle. Tabasco no. sauce. Yeah. Hits the spot. Connoisseur. Yeah, if you ever need a Michelin a star. Yeah. <laughs> Hardly Michelin. No, that's good. Yeah. I've never tried the olive butter. I might try that. It's good, yeah? Yeah, I'm into olive oil butter. Olive That's oil. like the bougie jacket potato, chips and beans. Basically. Beans yeah. and cheese, sorry. I've never yeah. thought about it like that. Have you had jacket potato, yeah, beans yeah, yeah. and cheese? Yeah. That's like staple British diet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you've thing. gone waffle land. And waffle land. Do you, okay, here's a question. Up. Do you eat the skin on your jacket potato? I love the skin. Yeah, That's the too. best part. Yeah. Do you eat the that? skin when you eat the potato or do you leave the skin till last and eat last. it? Last. No, I eat it with Yeah. <gasps> oh, last. It's all about last. That's the best bit. Yeah, yeah. What do you do? <laughs> Tell us in the comments below. <laughs> Spiritual. Um, we've got another verse for you. Today, what's the topic again? What are we talking about? We're just talking about, I think, managing habits. Habits. Addiction. Addiction, habits, the journey that our mind goes through. Yeah. According to... If you've got a pen and paper, wisdom. it would be good to write down what's a habit for you that you know doesn't serve you or what's an addiction for you that you're conscious of at least let's let's start with what we're conscious of that we and then maybe there might be some tools in this conversation that might help all of us to take a step in that direction towards maybe um substituting negating that habit that addiction uh let's let's get into it um what is a habit that both of you have that you don't really appreciate about yourself or wish didn't exist that's a really good question. I'll tell you mine. Mm. Late night eating. Really? Oh. It strikes 11, 12, and I get grumbly. Get the munchies, yeah? I get the munchies. It's an old habit. I've been doing it for a long time. Yeah. And I have a feeling that's the reason why I've not been able to shift any weight. Mm. Because I'm eating late. Mine is Can't a... shift the weight. Don't eat late. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mine is a similar thing at late night, but it's um, always being on my phone or my laptop just before I'm about to go to sleep. I have this thing where if I go for a you long day of work, sleep. 
Scroll. If I if I have a long day at work, I feel guilty if I haven't had any time of recreation in my day. Mm. That's the the doom scroll. The doom scroll, yeah. Yeah. So I'm scrolling just for the sake of I need some time for myself before I go into work the next day because I know it's going to be a whole kerfuffle. Mm. But what happens is I I eat my own words because I I'm wasting like an hour on my phone just doom watching scrolling. nonsensical like videos on Instagram. Is only that thing, to by the way, doom scrolling. I don't want to. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Only to to wake up late, and then my next day I'm I'm upset at myself because I didn't get a nice early morning and get some yeah. quality meditation in. It's a vicious cycle, and it's just as a habit. I went through this period where I actually had a digital detox about one one and a half hours before sleeping. No tech in my room, mm. no to and sleep was great. Wake up really nice. Sleep is powerful. Oh my god! Even just time away. I mean, this sounds this might sound a little disgusting, but very recently. I stopped taking my phone to the bathroom and like, you know, even, I mean, not doing those activities only, but like, I mean, while I brush my teeth, while I'm like, you know, getting ready for the day, I put my phone on a, on dock, on a charger. Mm. And so I don't charge overnight now. I just keep it on the charger when I'm in mm. doing the bathroom duties. And that way I don't take it with me and like scroll endlessly while I'm like, even like when you're brushing teeth sometimes, you know, I just had it on mm. in the background, just playing a reel or something. So... That's been game changing just to shower without a phone. And mm. I mean, not that I'm in the shower with the phone, <laughs> <laughs> but you get the point, like, you know, buzzing in the corner. And I'm like, oh, 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 who's messaged? You know, like, mm. yeah. don't do that anymore. Someone, so I start there. I do start there for me. Someone was sharing this um, this idea of how, like, boundaryless technology is, but also, like, addiction is a thing that's, like, always testing our boundaries. It's mm. like, oh, you're going to go one step further. Oh, you're going to go one step further. You're going to go one step further. And uh, this person was saying, I can't remember where I heard it, but they were saying before you can create boundaries with others in your life, maybe you're addicted to toxic people. Or, you know, mm. some people, like, they're addicted to toxic relationships, yeah. you know. But they said the reason why you can't get over that is because you don't have boundaries with yourself mm -hmm. and with your own, like, use of technology or food late at night or whatever it is, you know. And that's the that's the clincher. Yeah. What's it for you? Um, I can't... Nothing pops up. Well, <clears throat> the thing is, my life isn't very... Um, I've I've lacked routine for the for quite a while, so I don't have time to, like have habit so much um yeah i can't really think definitely the 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 phone in the toilet is one yeah but i don't feel too bad about that because like so i don't know get to i'd do rather that. watch a reel than the the tiles on the floor <laughs> fair enough um that's just that's just me yeah. not for everyone yeah um i used to when i moved to london three years ago i used to wake up every day 7 a.m and run around Stanmore Country Park. Thankfully, you said park. I thought you were just going to run around your flat. <laughs> nah. <laughs> I, used to get, I used to get up and, like, before I showered, before I did anything, I'd go out, I'd, like, run, I'd do press-ups, I'd, like, do a full workout, and I felt yeah, so good, son. and that was, like, every day, and that was such wow. a good habit. And then I'd go to Cafe Nero, I'd get a coffee or a tea, I'd sit down, I'd journal, um, and then I'd meditate, and then I'd go about my day. That was like amazing that routine, yeah. but I've just Damn, lost that. Sounds that. hearty, mate. It was so good, but now my my the main habit that I hate but I can't seem to shake. Here we go. Is uh, London Underground? Like I'm on a what, tube every day. Oh. I don't know. I must be. I'm on a tube every day. <laughs> like surely, surely. I should have like one day at home because mm. I think that oh I have to go on the on the tube because yeah. I've said yes to do this thing or that thing but maybe I'm actually addicted to being on the underground you know I what's know. game changing I'm, I'm, I'm manifesting it for you yeah a car oh it's gonna game man changing. manifest me a Tesla yeah come on if um, anyone can do it it's you <laughs> <Tesla>. <laughs> manifesto El Kaley Woods, bah. Wow. <laughs> there you go, done. Done. It'll, it'll are be done. outside. <laughs> I'll be outside before you know. <laughs> yeah. Fake guru alert. Um, the word habit is really interesting because mm -hmm. it's like. Uh, What's the etymology? Anyone know? Habit. I don't know. Kaley's, you're the I don't know. etymology kind of guy. But habit is something you're habituated. 
to do, mm. right? And it's in your habitat, so it just becomes part of your environment. Mm. And a negative habit as part of your environment is actually destructive because you don't even realize it's out of place. Mm. It just feels so normal. Um, yeah, habitual ritual. Mm. The Latin root of habit is habitus. Habitus. Yeah. Condition. Bearing, state, appearance, dress, attire. From habio, I have, hold, keep. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. There's actually that I, that understanding of addiction of, um, uh, like the story of the guy who's hanging onto the burning tree. Mm-hmm. He's like hanging onto this burning tree and everyone's like, just let go. And he's like, I can't, the tree's mm-hmm. got me. The tree's got me. It's like, mm-hmm. no, just let go. And that's the weird thing about habit or addiction is that it's something we're holding on to. It's not that it has yeah. us. We have it and we won't let it go. Mm. There's that verse in the Gita, isn't there? Um, Param drishva navartate, that the way to give up something of a lower nature is to have a higher oh, yeah. taste. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. But it's often like um, the smallest habits can lead to the biggest effects in our life as well that's good and so bad true. right that's yeah. so, true. So, so for example for me like if i just say just by dropping the tech habit you know instead of watching like another review of of some new shoes or a, some a bike or whatever it I may love be watching review stuff uh i watch the same review over and over again sometimes Why? i don't know <laughs> that's that's mad yeah as if i'm gonna get some new insights from it or something sometimes sometimes you know i, I just bought a pair of new motorcycle shoes right oh, I, thought I was gonna ask you to show it to us Nah, they're, they're really cool there. And they're, and um, I've watched the same review, the same three reviews on that same pair of shoes five times. <gasps> wow. It must, it must give you some like dopamine Yeah, you must like or it. Or I think it's my cautious brain that I, when I buy something, I really need to feel it's the right I've thing. like done my due diligence before buying it because they're not cheap. That's my dad. Hmm. But it's, it's also interesting. Like. <laughs> That's what he does. Yeah. But buy, it's interesting. Buy right? cheap, buy twice, isn't it? Yeah. Buy cheap, buy twice. Yeah, that's what that's they the say. Oh. Yeah. If you don't do your research and you just get like whatever, yeah. then it'll probably break and you'll have to get it again. Yeah. Mm. So I, I cut you off like no, three no. times then. So did I. Oh, that's all good. We're terrible people. Yeah, I know. It's a habit you need to kick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, that's a habit. <laughs> do you know, that's a yeah, habit that I've. Yeah. Um, I used to just let people talk and talk and talk and talk. Londoners. And I'd I'd never like butt in, and now I'm trying to get better at butting in because like I've just spent so long just like this listening crap. to crap. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you know Kaylee Woods and he's been nodding along to you, no, he's thinking you're talking a load of crap. Mate. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to be careful. And yeah, yeah I'm sorry to interrupt. Go no, on. no, no, it's all good. <laughs> I was just gonna say like, if I could kick the tech habit at night, my mornings would be better. My well-being, my mental state, my focus. Just the way I approach the whole next day totally shifts. Mm. Amazing. Hmm. Shall we read that verse? Read the verse. It's, today it's two verses. Chapter oh. 2, text number 62 of the Bhagavad Gita. Hallelujah. Um, while contemplating the object of the senses, a person develops... <laughs> I thought you were gone. You just turned the other way. I'm fine, I'm fine. Oh, you're holding it. <laughs> no. I just like the hallelujah. That was so oh, That was a very odd pitch. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I don't hear you sing that high often. That's yeah. <laughs> sorry, start right, again. 962. Oh, sorry, 262. 262. Chapter 2, text 62. While contemplating the objects of the senses, a person develops attachment for them. And from such attachment, lust develops... And from lust, anger arises. Text 63. From anger, complete delusion arises. And from delusion, bewilderment of memory. And when memory is bewildered, intelligence is lost. And when intelligence is lost, one falls down again into the material pool. If you're a note taker, you can... We might have to go step by step on that one. Yeah, we might be here for like two hours though. (laughs) It's a lot to go through. The first line. So what was where did it start from? Well, contemplating the objects of the senses. So the objects of the senses are like what? Chocolate. Yeah, contemplate the object of the senses, what our senses are attracted to, those things right. that we have negative habits or attraction towards. Mm, I could do with a Yorkie bar. <laughs> Yorkie. Yeah. 
a person develops attachment for them. So thinking, yeah, Yorkie, mm-hmm. good old Yorkie. And I get attached to it. And from that attachment, lust develops. Mm-hmm, I can see how that would happen. And from lust, anger but that, arises. That lust means it's a... Right. Because lust is often an Sexual. immature... Um, it's an, it's an extremified desire for that thing, yeah, right? It's dreaming right, yeah. up in your head for an experience which you think you're going to get. Right. And then anger follows, right? Mm-hmm. From lust, anger. From anger, delusion. Yeah, when you're angry, you're like completely deluded. You can't think straight. And from delusion, bewilderment of memory. That's an interesting one because yeah. now your intelligence is lost because you don't know right from wrong. Right. You don't know why you're doing something or why you shouldn't be doing something in the first place. Yep. And that's exactly that. Memory is bewildered, then intelligence is lost. And when intelligence is lost, one falls down again into the material pool. Mm. Mm. Apparently, there's uh, there's only two outcomes from lust. Mm-hmm. Have you heard this? No. So, only two things can happen. Either your lust is fulfilled, in which case you become greedy, or lust is not fulfilled in which case you become frustrated Mm -hmm. or angry angry yeah so it's it's almost like we have to catch ourselves at the contemplation bit Mm. because it's that cycle isn't it like thinking feeling willing Willing, or acting so if you can there's this book um by carol dweck i think her name is she wrote this book called mindset and it's an interesting book. It It's about like fixed mindset or growth mindset. Yeah. So someone with a fixed mindset uh, depends mainly on their talent and their natural ability. And that's how they succeed. Uh, but if life doesn't work out for them, they feel completely devastated because they think that it was all on them and they couldn't do anything to improve. Whereas the growth mindset is about work and application and learning and so on. Um but she gives this kind of idea of like, if you have a bad experience, if you underperform, instead of beating yourself up about it, you can stop. Mm. Like you you catch yourself and you think, what's the lesson here? Like, what can I learn from this? And so I had to train my mindset to do that and to catch myself. And at first it took like a week of feeling like down in the dumps, then be like, actually, no, I can change. Yeah. And then it was like a few days and I was like, no, I can change. Yeah. And now it's like as soon as something happens that I'm I'm not happy with it within myself, I catch my mind and I'm like, actually, let's not beat myself up about this. Just think, what can I do to change next yeah. time? Yeah. And uh, I think that's applicable here. Or that's what maybe one thing the Gita is trying to teach us is that yeah, if we can catch ourselves contemplating it, we know that, like, it's like pornography, right? Yeah. You think, oh, I'm not going to look at pornography. And you know that this thing you type in is going to lead to that, and then this website, and then you're back there. And mm-hmm. it's, like, so quick, you know? Or any addiction is like that. So if you can catch yourself at that contemplation bit, then you're Self-talk. going to save yourself the whole other, like, six or seven steps, right? Yeah. yeah. But in order to even catch yourself, I was going to ask, right? In order to even catch yourself, you have to. We have to accept we've got an issue. Mm. We've got a situation which we want to change. Mm-hmm. Only if we accept that and we're conscious of that, like in you know in in drug addiction, you have the there's twelve steps of recovery. The first step yep. is actually accepting the fact that I have an issue. Mm. I have a problem with this, and this I think this works for just even the smallest habits that we're trying to kick. Mm. Like I've actually got an issue. It's not okay. It's not. It's all right. I'll deal with it tomorrow. I can easily handle that. When we say that to ourselves, I can easily deal with that. Chances are you're never going to deal with it. Mm. Yeah, and I think uh, what's helped me with accepting I've got a habit is telling someone. Yeah, vocalizing it has always helped me to understand that I don't need to hide it, and then it it doesn't become. You know, something I have to be shamed about. It's not like this taboo thing it's anymore. not taboo anymore. And sometimes it's worked in my favor, and I'm sometimes it's kind of pushed people away because they'd be like, oh, you're something different than what I thought you were. Mm. But I'm willing to take the risk if it means that I'm one day going to kick the habit. Yeah. Like, that's why I think open, even like sharing here about this whole eating late at night thing, that's fully a thing that I'm still trying to figure out. But hopefully a few thousand people will know about it now. 
And it will, I'm not looking for solutions quite yet. I'm looking at just acknowledging that I need to do something about it. Hmm. So, I think when you when you speak it to someone else, uh, it kind of like creates an an accountability around it. Yeah. yeah. Where you, at least you're like shining a light on it, and yeah. then, you know, maybe if you share that with someone that you trust, the next time they see you, they're gonna be like, "Did you eat late last night?" And you're like, "Yeah." And they're like, "Maybe you should not." And you're like, "Yeah." Mm. Eventually, it will come through. Yeah, because there are some habits. Here's here's a good question for you. What's a habit that you've kicked? Mm. What's a habit that you've been able to let go of? So many. Yeah. yeah. I used to be a smoker. That's a tough habit to kick. Did you guys smoke? Yeah. It's never a chain smoker. Not like chain, that, no. no. You? I started when I was eleven. Damn. I I had my my first cigarette. I got someone to buy me tobacco and, and you skins. It. You did a rolly. I went up to my parents' bathroom. Yeah. I rolled it on the toilet seat. On the, and then... I, no, not on the toilet seat. On the toilet, you seat, on the toilet seat. On the toilet seat. No. Yeah. Because I was trying to be like private and that was like a flat surface. I wasn't thinking, oh. this is dirty. Yeah. I was thinking, I'm 11 and I'm going to try and smoke a fag. Wow. <laughs> and then I went outside and I tried to smoke it and I threw up. <gasps> And then I went back upstairs, <laughs> rolled another one, tried again, threw up again. And then I think the third time did I didn't... How did get through? Okay, oh, and you smoked it yeah, yeah. entirely yeah. and threw up? Yeah. Yeah, because I remember the first cigarette, you feel like really lightheaded and woozy. Mm. I felt terrible. I, I basically brainwashed myself into wow. thinking smoking was good. Wow. And then I smoked from like 11 until 19. <gasps> whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Actually, um, a long time. the thing I, I hand, hands down, I really feel like this was the thing that helped was chanting the Maha Mantra. That's, nah, that's, that's too good to be true. Because within, so I discovered Krishna consciousness, I started chanting. I was only chanting like one round a day. And within two weeks, I completely stopped smoking. I didn't do patches or anything. Wow. To be fair, neither did I. My, my missus just told me it's me or the cigarettes. And I just went on it. Went cold turkey wow. overnight. I've got to admit, though, sometimes when I... It's not all the time. It's not like, oh, I really want that. But just, I think the impression stays. Mm. And I've not gone back to it since. Yeah. But the impression stays. And, and I think that's one thing to acknowledge, that when it comes to a habit, it's, that it's like almost like uh, breaking a glass. You can try and mend it back with sticking the pieces together, but the crack will still remain. Yeah. And so... Some scar is deep, right? Some scar, yeah. But it's not, it wasn't the, um, for me anyway, it wasn't the like experience or the smell or mm. any of that that attracted me. It And it wasn't necessarily peer pressure, but it was the images that Section. I'd seen of cool guys smoking. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, that's who I want to be. It was like m maybe more a, a thing of like acceptance or being perceived as the cool guy with the cigarette yeah. rather than the ac the actual thing is very austere in it itself is a bit austere. Yeah. you know i had to train myself to like it everything ashes all over the place yeah yeah your fingers, fingers go, go all like go, yellow, yellow your teeth go yellow you just smell all the time mm. <laughs> I used to smoke before school i used to smoke with this guy called jack duffy hey jack <laughs> i hope you're still out there jack <laughs> And uh, what he's not gonna, oh, okay. Uh -huh. I don't, I haven't spoken to him for like <laughs> 15 years. Okay. Um, but we would, we would have a cigarette together and then to cover it up, we'd spray ourselves with links. <laughs> yeah. And then we'd walk into school yeah. spending like links and, and fags. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I did? Like, so th the first cigarette I ever had, I was 16, my 16th birthday. A few friends gave me a car, they put a cigarette, Benson and Hedges, boom. Benson, those are dirty. And then, that's an old man. That's yeah, like that's a Guinness old. one. <laughs> and, uh, Someone have definitely that checked that from the dad. Yeah, yeah, definitely. definitely. <laughs> so I had it, had it in this card, and I thought oh, I woke up on my 16th birthday, and I heard that. Obviously, like I'd never smoked cigarettes since then, right? And um, I, had, I didn't want my breath to stink or anything like that. I didn't want my teeth to get yellow. So I got ready, you know, did my business in the toilet, getting ready to brush my teeth. But I thought before I brush my teeth. Let me spark this up. <laughs> and then I remember having like half the cigarette and um, I don't know what it was for me. It was just like, I was a bit dizzy, mm. but I was also like, this is rank. <laughs> I 
I was like, no, yeah, nah, I just can't do it. And I just like brushed my teeth. It's very interesting how people have different like, I, I think with, with drinking, right? Drinking is a big thing. Like a lot of my family thought, oh, he's never going to stop drinking. Like forget it. He loves going to clubs, parties. He's never going to stop drinking. And alcohol on its own is disgusting. Mm. If you strip alcohol on its own, it's actually Raw. disgusting, mm. right? That's why you have to put so much sugar in cocktails just to make them like somewhat, mm-hmm. you know, uh, palatable. But it's just the whole cultural experience that these things give us. The substance on its own, with things like drinking and smoking, I think they're not. And when you when you kick the habit, then you see the reality. Then when you look at people, you're like, oh man, that is dirty. Mm. There is a big social component to it. Hundred percent. Yeah. Even um, within spirituality, you see that it's maybe a more righteous form of addiction. But sometimes I've thought, like, am I here in this social community yeah. or spiritual group because I <laughs> genuinely want to be here, or am I addicted to the feeling of being part of something? Yeah. You know. Yeah. And so sometimes, actually, the drink or the cigarette, or the whatever it is, is an excuse to be, to just have that feeling of like, I want to belong to this. Belonging. You know? <clears throat> I used to go to, I used to go to uni with a, a couple of group of lads, and uh, we used to go to the pub all the time, and they're all big drinkers. They don't come from a culture where even no one in the family doesn't drink, right? And um, belonging. We used mm. to go to this pub. I started drinking Guinness because of them, and getting really Guinness into Guinness. Dirty, man. Nah, Guinness was good. But um But I did it because it was like there was a sense of belonging. Like yeah. I'm in this group, cool. It's just like Guinness or not. Mm-hmm. You know, mm. I need it was my just way an in. excuse. To I need be my there. ticket in, is I want to be accepted. Yeah. Mm. Acceptance. What about the more subtle forms of addiction? Yeah. Addicted to speculation. Mm. Criticism. Criticism. Judgment. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I think that one thing we all have to accept is whether it's a substance or whether it's a character trait or whether it's scrolling on the toilet or whatever it is, there has to come a point where we acknowledge that uh, there are, there's a tendency in the human form of life to attach ourselves or to be attached. And that's okay. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, who is our like grandfather guru, is like our. We all got spiritual teachers. Who is this? Uh, who has a spiritual teacher? Who had a spiritual? It goes back two generations, basically. He said that to make mistakes is natural. To have habits is all this kind of have, make these kind of mistakes is completely natural. But what we should avoid is the tendency to cheat, mm. to brush it under the carpet. To avoid it and just be like, no, no, I'm, I'm fine, you know. I'm just like, yeah. how's mm. things going? Yeah, yeah, normal, you know. Mm. Mm. So that tendency to brush things under the carpet and and cheat people or even cheat ourselves. Let's let's mm. start there. Cheating ourselves. That's something we have to avoid. That's how we put it. Mm. That should be avoided. And so, how to avoid cheating ourselves is there's so many like, you know, we could give so many of these. What is it called? Uh, Rob. What's his name? Oh man. Self help coach. Tony Robbins. Tony, Tony Robbins. Robbins. There we go. We've got so many Tony we could we can come with some Tony Robbins things like tell a friend, journal about it, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um I think one powerful way is to pray about it. Mm. Like I like that in Bhakti, God is a person mm. and um uh is he's not someone or she's not someone, they're not those that I, I speak to that often. Mm. But um, I found in my life that when I've really gone through to rock bottom with something that I know is not something that I really want to remain in my life, I just pray about it. Mm-hmm. And prayer doesn't need to be something we need to be scared of. Like mm-hmm. I, I think this this is a cool thing that I want to get your guys' input on on prayer. It doesn't need to be complex. It doesn't need to be like composed uh, with um, you know rhyming words and and in a metered form and yeah it, it could just be as simple as I need some help. Can you give me a sign? Can you give me some sort of sign as to how I can kick this habit? How can I get rid of this cheating mentality? Like what what's my mm. next step there? Mm. 
Krishna, yeah, Krishna says there's this verse, um, a karma sava karma vak moksha daru moksha uh, moksha karma moksha karma udaradi tivrena bhakti yogena yajita purusham param. So he says, whether you are full of material desires, you have no material desires, or you just desire liberation, mm. you should still approach me and you should still mm. try and connect with me. And uh, I was speaking with Jana V. Harrison, a friend of ours, who is Hello. a phenomenal singer and Bhakti practitioner. And uh, she was saying she learned from one of her teachers, Yamuna Devi, that actually you can, uh, you can approach God in a personal way, just like we're having a conversation yeah. now. You can, she, uh, apparently Yamuna Devi would even sing songs like just like you were speaking, like, please help me with this, whatever. And oh, she would sing oh, in that beautiful. way because that was that was personal to her. But um, I like this point of not feeling like prayer has to be this lofty thing no. and this like rules and regulations thing, but actually just having a conversation totally. and just saying, you know, I'm full of Lord. I'm full of material desires. Mm -hmm. I really need your help with this. I know I'm not perfect. I'm trying my best, you know, please just like, don't give up on me and just like yeah. help me, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Should I tell you um, something really interesting mm. based on this conversation? So one of the reasons I feel I fell into spiritual life was because there's a habit I've had as a kid that it just this whole conversation just made me remember. As a kid, I wouldn't go one night without making a prayer. I would sit in my bed put my duvet on really? and I would, make, I would make a prayer. At that time, I didn't know what, who God was. It was just, I know something's there. Here's a prayer. And I used to say every night without fail, I say, look, if you're out there, let me know. Don't give me no subtle messages. I need a smack in the face. Like mm. you need to be really bold with me. Otherwise I'm not going to get it. That's like you need to show. Enough. And I remember being on a school trip once and it was me and two other guys in the room and we're all in, all in bed. I'm there and uh, these guys want to have a chat. But I'm in the middle of like my prayer because it's just a habit, right? I've mm -hmm. just built it into be a habit as a kid. Like I can't go a day without this. And he, he goes over to me and he goes, oh, by the way, what do you think about that? And I'm just like, I had to break the, the prayer. I was like, sorry, I'm just praying. And he was like, oh, sorry, sorry. It was so funny. <laughs> like He was just like, what? But I was just so determined. No, I, I've got to do this. That's powerful, bro. And I felt like my prayers then as a kid were just like a child's prayers. They were mm. just innocent mm. and like curious. They weren't, I didn't have any ulterior intentions back then. I was just a kid, man, mm. like 10 years old. Like, like you know, what's, what's life at that age? And um, I think back then I was like, that's a habit I, I wish I could bring back again because it was just innocent and genuine and mm. it had power. It took years, but when it dropped, it dropped, you know? Mm. Um, it's, it's it's so powerful. I, I I love the practice of prayer. Actually, mm. you mentioned Yamuna Devi, mm. and uh, there's this song that she <coughs> sings. If you look it up on like any Spotify, Apple Music, and uh, w the lyrics are Bajahure um, Mana mm. Sri Nanda Nanda Na Abhaya Charanada Vindare, and she in the recording. She sings, Bajamana Hure. Bajamana Hure. She's singing the wrong lyrics. Mm. And George Harrison recorded it. Wow. And what's powerful about that is that afterwards she was like kind of asked about it. And she didn't know, obviously, that she's, you know, she's just starting up in a spiritual practice. Sure. But the sincerity trumps the correct quote unquote correct way of doing things mm. Mm. if we can somehow l unlock that part of us which mm, calls out with a tender heart with a soft heart with a loving heart with a mm, genuine heart of wanting to overcome our, our, our lower nature uh, then I think that I don't think it'll fall on deaf ears mm. yeah. you know like uh, there was one moment in my life that I don't think I'll ever forget and I won't give the details because it's very, very personal to me. Um, but it involved a family member who 
uh, was about to incite violence in a drunken state. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, um, I was observing the whole thing. It was quite a scene. And I remember going towards the altar in my house. And it was, I mean, the whole scene was in, in, insane. I just couldn't get into it. But I just went to the altar. I said, if you're, if you're there on the altar, just just get off the altar and do something. <laughs> like, if you're, if you're really there, mm. can you please do something here just to help this person? And, um, yeah, I mean, it just became abundantly clear that anyone who calls with desperation and just a real longing, not just, oh, can you help me out and like, maybe help me out, but I need you. I need you in my life. Mm. I really want you to help me with this thing. Please, I can't do it on my own. Mm. This one habit is killing me. Like I just can't do it without you. I need you. Those three words, I think, if it's said with some, uh, like, almost like a burning desperation, mm. I can't imagine God sitting on his bum and saying, I'm not doing anything about it. Mm. Mm. He's going to send some help. Yeah. We may not see the help, but the help is coming. It's like that famous story that we hear of this man who's on the top of his house while the whole village is being inundated with floods. Mm. It's like, God, help me, God. I'm going to die. I'm going to drown. Help me. A boat comes by. And the boat people are like, come on, jump in, get mm. in the boat, we're going. No, 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 I'm waiting for God. Get out of the way. I'm waiting for God. Mm. God, where are you? Helicopter comes, drops the ladder. <laughs> jump in, we're going, we're going to say, no, get out of the way, I'm, I'm waiting for God. He dies, he drowns, he goes to heaven and he goes, God, where the hell were you? <laughs> so I send you a boat, send you a helicopter. Yeah. So that's what we've got to be aware of. Like We might be desperate in our prayer, but then we have to have the vision to see the help that's constantly being given to us. Yeah. Hmm. Makes me think about, um, there's another verse in the Gita um, where Krishna says, basically he's saying that he, he reserves the right to be unmanifest to those mm. that are indifferent. Mm. Um, yeah. Naham Prakasha Saravasya, Yoga Maya Samavritaha. He says, I I cover myself with Yoga Maya with this like kind of veil of illusion. Um because, you know, people say, Well, if you know, if God is real, show me your God. Yeah, right. It's like, well, who are you to see God? You know, like what what qualifies you to see God? Yeah. You can't just walk up to Downing Street and knock on the door and say, I want to see the Prime Minister. I demand it. Yeah, exactly. It's not a cheap thing. So, but in, the opposite is true as well, is if you are making an effort, if you're not indifferent, then, you know, if God is God, then he, she, they will have the uh, the ability to manifest themselves to you. Mm. But I like that about making the prayer, taking action, but also like noticing the signs and noticing mm. the help that's sent. You know, yeah. Another, I guess, uh, uh, I don't know whether how many of these are going to come out, but prayer is definitely a powerful one. And the other one is just seeking help, mm. and like telling someone who is maybe five steps down the road in in spiritual experience, or not even spiritual, but just material experience. Like, it could just be an elder brother, yeah. elder sister, elder friend. Mm. You know, someone that you value that can give you guidance, and just. Asking that person, what do you think? How how do I go back? How did have you been through this? How did you get through it? Tell me. Mm. And faith comes in that way. You get faith in the process by those who have <laughs> received the answer, so to say. Mm. Mm. So someone helped me um, once understand how a big component of addiction is uh, guilt and shame that's mm. wrapped up in it, and they said that. The soul is anandamoy byosyat, which means pleasure seeking by nature. Yeah. Like yeah. a symptom of the soul is to desire. And so rather than trying to stop desire, nirvana, no desire, actually we transmute the desire from lust to love. Mm. And that's the that's like the powerful transformation that any spiritual practice is meant to take us on you know it's been a deep episode hmm
Wow, it's gone places. Yeah, it's gone places. You can go more places, but for today, I think that's all we've got time for. Thank you all so much for listening and watching. Share it with a friend. Keep this conversation going. Let's get more people around our rectangle table. Rectangular <laughs> table. But we'll still call it round table. See you on the next one. Peace and love. If you love this episode, you'll love my interview with Mimi Icon on mindfulness to manifestation. Check it out. So I had this panic attack and I thought I was dying. So I go to my teacher and I'm like, I think I'm having a heart attack. Like, I'm so scared. And he's like, well, if you do, we'll call 911. This is back in Toronto. I was living in Toronto at the time. He's like, Mimi, you cannot run away from yourself. It's a panic attack, most likely. Like, now go back into meditation and sit through it and watch it. Any emotional reaction is like a storm. Like, it has a beginning, a middle, and an end.